welcome to another edition of Yachts Cruise Weekly. As you can see, the weather's not ideal today for being out in the garden. We've got rain and sleet and a bit of snow mixed in. It's one degrees. Very soggy, very wet, very icy as well. So we won't be spending much time outside. Here's what's coming up in today's episode. So let's have a look at the paths that I've started to, to mark out. So we've gone from the area where the, the vegetable patch is and the greenhouse at the moment. And it's going to be an angle path going towards the tree ferns. So it'll go this way to be walking towards the tree ferns like this. And then you'll turn corner to your right and go this way towards where the Chachycarpus palms are and then we'll be turning sharply sharp corner there so I might put a bamboo I think on this corner and turn towards where the bamboos are over here just look at the ground over here what an awful day wet just sodden, absolutely awful slushy stuff anyway and then it will go towards the jungle hut here and widen out so the path will also go over the bridge and to the next stage, next part of the garden down that way so if you just look back you can see it's a winding path and in all the borders either side I'm going to dig up over the soil and grow lots of jungle plants that will be very enclosed and quite claustrophobic in this area and the idea being then you'll come to the bridge, go over here and it opens up a lot more So my seed order arrived earlier this week and I'll just go through which seeds I bought and where I'll be growing them in the garden. As the first ones I got are the Amaranthus Tricolor Tricolor Splendens Perfecta and these will go with the other Amaranthus in the garden and I'll just broadcast these on the ground and let them just grow where they where they fall basically and they'll go around the pond area and in the the borders just after that area as well. And these will be multicolored leaves that will complement the other amaranthus in the garden. Next ones are ricinus and these are mixed varieties so there should be some bronzy coloured leaves, some green ones and some red ones, purple ones. I'll have to wait and see. So I'll sow these in March and these come up pretty quickly and these will be in the heater propagator to germinate and then they'll be planted out in May and June. And quite large architectural plants and quite big seeds that are obviously, like it says here, very poisonous. Next one is a type of Mexican sunflower, the Tifonia rotundifolia yellow torch. So these are nice daisy-like flowers, but this one's got yellow rather than the usual orange flower. And I'll sow these in March in the propagator. And these will be dotted about the garden. Next one are zinnias, zinnia elegans super yoga dark red. So these are dark red flowering daisy-like flowers and lots of colour to the garden. These don't like root disturbance so they'll go in individual little pots when they're sown and then they'll be planted out in May onwards. Now in fact there's lots of seeds in there as well so plenty of plants. Next one is a Tropelum 
Peltiforum Spitfire. So these are basically like a nasturtium flower. It's a climber, so it will get to about three or four meters tall and will go over the archway near the pond. And these are pretty easy to grow as well, hardy annuals. Don't need too much treatment, they'll grow just in the greenhouse without being in the propagator. And the next one is Nicandra, Physaloides, Splash of Cream. So the normal Nicandra, which you can see in lots of places because it comes actually in a lot of bird feed seed mixes. You might see it grown as a weed in the garden. It has like really dark purpley black stems with green leaves and little purple bell-shaped flowers. This one though has variegated and sort of splodges on the leaves of whites and creams against the green, so it'll be a bit, a bit different from the usual Nicandra. Again, these will be broadcast around the garden, just seeds thrown on the ground, and they'll just germinate wherever they land. Now the next one's had a couple of name changes, and it's now called Quorm Oclit Lobata, Spanish flag. It was in the, the um, Morning Glory family, but now it seems to have changed its name. Anyway, this will be sown indoors probably in February, March time. And this is another climber, gets to a couple of metres normally. It can get a lot taller, but I find it gets to a couple of metres, maybe three metres at best. And that will go through other plants that are tall and sort of climb through them. So through the bamboos, for instance. Now the next one is a really nice climber and this will be sown very soon and then be planted out when all the frosts have passed in May and this will scramble up lots of plants and it should be perennial so it should come back if we have mild winters if not it will self seed around the garden hopefully as well and this is the orange red form so we'll see how that goes Next one I got was Cleome Spinosa, Violet Queen. So this is beautiful plumes of purple violet flowers of a sort of green foliage, which is a little bit spiky. And this attracts lots of bees and butterflies. And it looks really exotic, the flowers. It's definitely one to look up. And that'll be sown indoors in the next few months. Now the next one might be a bit of a challenge, it's Giant Dutchman's Pipe, which is Aristolochia grandiflora. It says a greenhouse perennial, it needs to be indoors really, but it can be planted out in summer when it's above 20 degrees, so in June, July and August. We'll try that over the archway. It's a vigorous climber, woody climber, and then it'll have these really unusual large flowers that apparently smell very bad. So we'll sow them soon and see how they get on. And the last of the seeds I got, again, was another ricinus. This is uh, Kermentica. And this will, again, be used as a colourful foliage plant, a bit of structure in the garden. So that is all the seeds that arrived this week and over the next few months I'll be sowing these seeds, showing you how I do that and watching them grow and plant them out in early summer. This is squelchy, waterlogged ground, freezing, awful muddy mess. Some people ask if some plants are hardy growing in the ground and it depends where you plant it because if you plant stuff in this then it's not going to survive winter if it's uh, the regular exotic plants so even mediterranean plants talking herbs like rosemary and lavender it'll hate to grow in this and it'll just die off in the winter same with things like dahlias and colocasias you plant it in this and it won't thank you for it and it'll probably rot off and die in winter. But it doesn't mean it's not a hardy plant. 
because you can grow loads of stuff in this country, it just has to be in the right soil. And that is why the second half of my garden is all raised beds so I can grow my palms and my yuccas, collocasias and dahlias and gingers and leave them in the ground because it's free draining. So if we go down, let's go down and have a look at that part of the garden and we'll see that the ground itself is not a big soggy mess. So if we go, let's look over here. You can see there's no standing water, it's a little bit of frost on it and uh, sleet, but it's not. Look, I can kick it. And it's all free draining, very water, moisture retentive. It's clay with lots of grit in it and it's, it's raised up over the real ground level. And that is why I can grow the palms and all the other plants, the collocasias and the yuccas in it. So there's a big difference between free draining good soil and awful wet clay thick waterlogged soil without much oxygen in it. So if you're going to grow loads of plants like this you do need to think about the soil before you plant them in the ground. So the plant of the week this week is a eucalyptus tree. It's Eucalyptus porciflora debusivillii and this has a really nice white and cream trunk with some sort of army camouflage pattern on there which is really nice, very striking and it goes up, even on the old wood down there, but it goes up obviously into the new wood as being pure, pure white and patches come off the army effect and it flowers, as you can just see, and focus on the flower there. And that flowers throughout the year, a couple of times. And it does grow quickly, it's eucalyptus after all, but it doesn't get out of hand. And obviously it's evergreen, so it's got these lance light leaves. And it looks good all year round. It's one of the benefits of growing eucalyptus trees, they don't shed them in autumn. And it's a great addition to a medium to large sized garden, even a small garden, but you, you want to keep it away from your house because obviously roots spread out quite a long way. This is a slower growing one, but it still gets to a sizeable tree given time. And it's probably one of the easiest to grow. It should be pretty hard as well, down to about minus 15 or so. And it gives a great, hopefully over time, great canopy in the garden as well. So it gives protection to plants downwind of it and underneath it. So that is a plant of the week this week. A beautiful, stunning white and buff coloured eucalyptus tree. It really, really is a grim, sloppy, slushy, cold squelchy day today. I think we've got our first winter casualty or one that looks pretty dead although probably will be okay and that is this Brea agilis. I think we've only had minus two-ish. I'll have to check, I think no more than minus two. But this palm has pretty much browned off and if you look in this hole that's ripped open you can see in there it's not dead See a bit of green, but most of it is looking a bit dead, the fronds are on the palm. So that's a bit disappointing, but I know it's a half hardy palm. So hopefully it will grow back strongly in spring and by summer it will look okay. But it is a been an awful few weeks of just cold weather, nothing too extreme but we've had so much slushy sleet it's been awful 
Off the Trachycarpus, palms, don't mind that at all, and the bamboos are fine. Either my princeps that looks like a waggy is laughing off the uh, the snow and the sludge. That's my uh, washy, washing Tony Robusta. I've got to cover that to be honest, it's still green, got a bit of frost damage on some of the foliage but that will come back fine in spring. And the booty there is looking good, but overall been a bit of a soggy one, hasn't it? So the weather for the next week ahead, thankfully, it's warming up. So Tuesday we're in double figures, Wednesday double figures. Still cool evenings and nights, but nothing below sub-zero, I wouldn't have thought. But that nice warm 10 or 12 degrees we're going to get midweek will thaw everything out and stir all the bulbs into growing and flowering and maybe the Muzubaju might even think about waking up. So that's what the weather's looking like and hopefully soon the garden will start perking up a little bit as well. We've still got the coldest month of the year to come which will be February so it's still a long way to get through this winter before we can start really thinking about unwrapping plants in spring itself. But there'll be lots to carry on with next week with seed sowing. So join me next week when I'll be starting to think about getting plants growing for next season.